Andrew, I think you are the perfect choice to head our Pacific Division. I would be honored, Mr. Winthorpe. Ah, please, call me Jack. Okay, Jack. <laughs> Scotch and soda for Andrew, and an old fashioned for Mr. Winthorpe. Oh, thank you, Christopher. My pleasure. Are you gentlemen ready to order, or would you prefer some time to enjoy your cocktails? Uh, I'm ready. Andrew, are you? Yes, sir. Ah, oh, the quick decision maker. I like that the sign of a winner. Please, go ahead and order whatever you want. Don't be shy. You are as good as hired. Thank you very much. Um, I'll have the ribeye, please. Excellent choice. How would you like that prepared? Rare. Ah! Now that's how a man eats! <laughs> mm. I will have the usual, mm. my boy. One foot long hot dog with warm cottage cheese on the side. Yes, sir. Is there something wrong? Oh, n no, no. I, I just didn't see that on the menu. No, oh, it's special. They, uh, they make it just for for me, one of the uh, the perks of being a CEO, I suppose. <laughs> if, you, if you'd like, I can call the waiter back and you, you can order that instead. No, no, thank you. Thank you, I, uh, I, I'll i stick with the ribeye. Mm. So I won't lie, graduating from Dartmouth certainly did not hurt getting your resume in front of me. I was excited to hear that you were a fellow mouther. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I graduated in, in uh, with a major in business and a minor in uh, s psychology. Mm, I know. I I minored in uh, German studies. Ah. Were you, by chance, on the rowing team? Yes, I was. Ah, oh, I knew you'd be perfect for my company. Cheers to a bright future and to you, Andrew. Thank you. Mm. Oh, they are so... Fast here. Oh, thank you so mm. much. Is there anything I can get you, gentlemen, in the time being? I think uh, I think we are all set. It thank looks, you so much. It's great. Thank you. Oh, bon appetit. Yes, that looks good. So I don't mean to get all corporate here on you, but. Um, what would you say is your biggest weakness? Well, you know, I'm a bit of a workaholic. When I'm given a task, I just tend to have to go for it. Jesus Christ! I, oh my, I mean, sometimes I tend to spend too much time on projects and oftentimes my wife will complain that, you know, when I need to, well, oh my, uh, at my company, you can come as early as you like and finish as late as you want. But family is most important. Mm -hmm. Since you mentioned it, my friends, what would they say about you if I asked them? Oh, gosh, I guess depending on who you ask, they'd say that I'm very loyal and Ugh. trustworthy. Ugh. And hard. why? How's that a meal? I, it, it just, I, were they say I'm friendly and... When can you move your family out here? I don't know, soon? Mm. May I be able to interest either of you in dessert? We have a lovely chocolate cannoli tonight. Oh, I couldn't possibly eat one of those by myself. I would be happy to split one with Andrew. Two plates and forks? <laughs> Why? Wait, 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 wait. How are we gonna split a cannoli if we don't cut it in half? Well, we can either Lady in the Trampet or go Requiem for a Dream. What is that? Sir, that's ass to ass. I don't want to work for you. No one does.
Happy Tuesday, everybody, and welcome to Normal World. I'm Dave Landau. I'm Corner Blake Garrett, and I'm struggling not to laugh right now. Oh my gosh. That's the first time I watched that. So good. <laughs> hey, Angela. Hey. Angela's here. Hi, Dad. Hi, how are you? How are you, daughter? I'm good. Good young lady. Not even involved. <laughs> Mind your P's and Q's. I will. That's all I'm asking. I know. And joining us today, actually one of the guys uh, I ever featured for about 20 years ago <laughs> at the Holly Hotel in Holly, Michigan. Yeah, which is burned down now. It, it was burned to the ground in what I'm sure wasn't insurance fraud <laughs> at all. Uh, he's got a new special out called Bachelor Party, uh, which you can see on all Bachelor, platforms. Bachelorette. Bachelor, I'm sorry. Bachelorette I'm sorry. Party. Bachelorette. I'm sorry. It's okay. Bachelorette party. The lady version. Yes. The cr the people you always want at your comedy show. That's the idea. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's available everywhere and including Tubi. Oh, yeah. I'm where... on, Tubi. on Tubi. Yeah. I'm on... not no one. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no one. Please welcome Tim Slagle. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. You can call me Grandpa Angela. I <laughs> And uh, I myself, you can see me April 5th at the Ferenthal in, Mi in Muskegon, Michigan, and April 13th at the Orpheum in Billings, Montana, with mm. Derek Richards, both of those shows. Derek Richards of uh, Cottage Derek Cheese Richards, the man who Bam. just deep-throated a hot dog. Yes. And you will not be sharing a cannoli. No, no, not that <laughs> night. No, no, no. <laughs> well, certainly not on camera. No, no, no. But maybe. <laughs> hey, you could uh, you could find me on my personal channel and on Nerd Rotic on Fridays for Friday Night Tights, where we talk about pop culture and all kinds of stuff. Uh, yeah, go check it out. You guys talking about Dune coming up? Oh yeah, Not we're gonna watch Dune. Are Come you on. gonna get one of those? Uh... I hope so. Chris Gore <laughs> is supposed to hook me up with one of those popcorn cups. So. Okay. Okay. To celebrate, I'm going to dress as the witch guy and go on planes and take up three seeds. Yeah. <laughs> and just like rub your nipples the whole time. You're like, I'm in character. And just, <laughs> just do that the whole flight. Just like every other fat person I've had to sit next to on Southwest last weekend. Ooh. Sorry, I'm still bitter. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the sandworms. I, I watched yeah. that whole first one and n no sandworms. Yeah, that's true. Right at the end. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit of sandworm. It's yeah, like a sandworm like teaser. Yep. Yeah, we need more. <laughs> just the worm. Us the yeah, that's what I want. I want to see <laughs> yeah. him riding the worms, you got, man. You just I got a little bit of the thing. helmet, but you didn't get enough. <laughs> you didn't get the full worm. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get that full shaft there. <laughs> yeah, I I uh, I love the first one though. It's great. It's phenomenal. It, uh, I want to see it in IMAX for sure. Because that's one of those movies that you go to the theater at an IMAX because it's just massive. It's like one of those epics. They don't. They don't make anymore. No, I want. I just saw this too, and I should have put it in here, and I will try it tomorrow. But they had Werner Herzog buy a ticket to see Barbie. Oh yes, oh, and he was. Like... Was this film? <laughs> oh, is was this film? The lunatic. Like he's the guy. If you don't know, he made Grizzly Man and Port of Call, uh, Bad Lieutenant, Port of Call, New Orleans, and like he's insane, and uh -huh. not like the David Lynch self-aware insane, like. <laughs> Just completely insane. And he's like, it was pure hell. He's like, I could only stand a half an hour and it is what hell is like. It's the greatest review <laughs> I've ever seen of a movie. He it, didn't even get to I'm Just Ken. I didn't. Uh, well, good news. You'll be hearing that sung at the Oscars, I found I out. I heard, yeah. So if you're going to be one of the declining uh, number of people. Yeah, this oh. is the, <laughs> Werner Herzog is pissed. <laughs> this is a guy who was angry that he couldn't put uh, the footage of people getting eaten by bears at the end of Grizzly Man. He could just have the audio. Uh huh? Yeah. I'd be mad about that. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. Which Grizzly Man... Well, I watched the movie for. I I did. That's what I watched. Again, it was like the sandworm. It's the buildup. You're, you're <laughs> like, it's called Grizzly Man. We all know what's going to happen right? from one, so... They're not your friend. I love how at the end they're like, look, we just... They thought he was tainted meat because he was such an idiot. That the bears were just like, we should like, eat no. that thing. And then at the end, they were like, we'll just eat it. And that guy's got worms for sure. Well, he's going up to bears and he's like, this one's cookie and this one's Skittles and this one's <laughs> strawberry. And he's like hitting them in the face. That reminds me of the, the movie that was shot. It's like uh, Big Cats or something. And they made an entire movie about uh, lions. Really? Yeah. And it was like this old Tiger money, King. Old, no. <laughs> old money, Lion Hollywood. King. Oh, I just uh, there were stuntmen. There were stuntmen. No, they were stuntmen, and they owned big cats, and they filmed an entire movie 
based around these big cats. And they were like, yeah, we have them trained and everything. It'll be okay. We have insurance. And they just got mauled the entire time they made this movie. It's a wild movie. I would watch that. Yeah. You should watch it's, it. Yeah. It always cracked me up with Siegfried and Roy when the when the, when the when the cat bit. I, I, I don't, was it Siegfried or Roy that got bit? I, Didn't I, they I, both I get bit? I thought they both did. One of them I got it good. No, no, no. One of them really got bit. It was like, oh, it was like the owners was of the- Roy. The owners of the casino said, well, you know, they, 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 that couldn't have ever happened to the audience because there was like a way of keeping them on stage, right? And they're going, oh, no, no, I'm not my kitties. It's yeah. like, mm. you mean they could have jumped into the audience at any time? Yeah, they wouldn't though. It's like, oh, <laughs> they wouldn't? Shut it, shut it down. Uh, shut, they, shut that but show they did, down. They, but they, they ate daddy's face. <laughs> <laughs> it was Roy. Uh, yeah, isn't it was Roy that got bit? Yeah. Okay. yeah. He lived for a while after, and it, his face was not magical. Ooh. Mm. But did Siegfried, though, I think, retired. Yeah, he shut it down. Retired. No, he should have And the lion died of solo. AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> His name was Manticore. <laughs> as God made him. <laughs> the tiger. Yeah, what? Well, it's what you get for... You put it you, in... A, come on. You put it in a sparkling vest and start throwing magic you know, explosions around it. Eventually, <laughs> it's going to be like, I'm going to kill this. These yeah. two, I can't do Today's that. a bad day, Roy. You did, yeah. No, no. Like, Roy, I don't want to. I don't want to disappear anymore. In fact, I really want to make. Really want to make a mark. Do you disappear? You no, know, I want to like hunt animals out in the wild, but you keep just whipping me. You know, it was a great show, yeah. though. Because for a few, few like it. at least 30 seconds, people were like, what? <laughs> <Wow. laughs> the effects on this one, man. Wow. These are just magnificent. They go all out, and then they're like, that is real blood. There is a, there's a story of a comedian, a club comedian. I can't remember who it was. He did, he had a, like a cockatoo that was like his, his big closer was pulling the cockatoo out of okay. you know, a place where it shouldn't be. And uh, uh, it for some reason, it flew and landed and went right into the ceiling fan. <laughs> <laughs> it was like his pet cockatoo had been with him for like 20 years. It was part of his closer. It's the ceiling no! fan. Wait, where do you Got pull it from? Feathers everywhere. <laughs> I, <laughs> you what if an it shouldn't on that be? One. Well, I would fly where, into the ceiling fan. Where a caca <laughs> should never have been. That's where. Ah, <laughs> Larry's caca. To cancel game. the next like four months of shows. Yeah. Like, I got to find the audience. I got to get another one. I got to train it up. You know, just an explosion of feathers in the audience. Oh, <gasps> <laughs> beautiful! <laughs> so they realize it's blood. All of a sudden, what the, is the magician's crying? <laughs> I had a guy who he was a, a magic act. It was in Cuyahoga Falls, and uh, he was a magician doing a guest set. And he, we went out and we were smoking a cigarette by this window. And I guess he thought it was like a mirror where this girl couldn't see him. And he's going like, I want to, you know, F you to this girl. And, I, and she looks over and goes, what? <laughs> and goes and taps her boyfriend, who's huge. And I was like, yeah, good luck with all that. Away from him. I'm going to disappear. Yeah, and it was so funny because, dude, this guy's beating the crap out of this magician in the hallway. But, like, all his tricks were falling out. <laughs> so there's, like, he beat the tricks out yeah, of him. Yeah, so there's... we got to make a sketch Starves. of that. It was so funny. <laughs> there's, like, Dubs. yeah, there's, yeah, there's, like, three other dead birds. There's just a Rabbit laying on the ground having long a handkerchief things like <laughs> coins coming out everywhere. <laughs> it, was, it was like Cards. his rings and pencils, and I was just oh, but man, he really hurt him. Man. Yeah, <laughs> man. I didn't realize his own trick mirror was a trick mirror, dude. He, no, he didn't. We were outside, so he thought that the the bar next door for some reason wasn't looking out. He thought it was the mirror inside, so uh. he just started saying it. And it's like you're a magician who doesn't understand mirrors, <laughs> and then just and he had really he had really childish tricks. Like oh, man. Yeah, he kicked yeah. the ten thirty show out of him. <laughs> <laughs> he did not do another guest set. It's very hard to be like, is Get this up. your card? You're like, yeah, mine was a bloody two of. <laughs> it's bent. I can see it's bent there in the middle. <laughs> They're all bent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's one of my favorite things to watch. Oh, man. Oh, I hope he's dead. So, um, no, I don't. I hope he, I hope he just Minecraft. stopped being a magician. Yeah. So, speaking of comics. Mm, yes. Uh, a buddy who I used to do a podcast with called Fair One. Mm -hmm. He hosted Saturday Night Live last weekend. I watched. My favorite sketch, personally, was cut from the show. I got to be honest. But um, 
He was fired for what they said was racist, homophobic jokes five years ago. Uh, it really was a guy who ironically makes bird calls for a living, dug up through every podcast he did until mm. he found him say the word gook, and he was saying it in a way that was him uh, pretending to be a guy who was ripping down Chinatown. So it actually yeah. wasn't meant in a derogatory fashion, but context doesn't matter, and especially at the height of the cancel culture. Yeah, This was all at the Dave Chappelle, Louis C.K., uh, height of that movement, um, and Shane was basically a feature act who then just got destroyed for a couple of years. He came out, I thought he had a great opening, was a lot of fun, and of course you have the mainstream media talking about how he bombed, which I find what? incredible, saying that he made, quote, retard jokes. Which, which he uh, did. Yes, but his jokes were about uh, the fact that he had... Mm -hmm. His, his uh, niece. Yes, yeah. and she has, he has family members that we, have Down whom syndrome. he loves, yeah. and she. And they're all positive Down syndrome jokes. That's the thing. It's like it's a funny joke, but it's not making fun of Down syndrome people. It's actually kind of making fun of himself, people, himself, and other people that treat Down syndrome people with kid gloves and stuff like that. When he's just like they have a great time. When he had a great joke about how, and they do, they run a coffee shop in his hometown. <laughs> and it's ran by, it so good. Yeah, and it's ran by people with, you know, yeah, people sure. with Down syndrome. And this is something where you actually see in the comments saying, I didn't even know this place was Shane's. My kid has Down syndrome and goes there. This is amazing. Yeah. Um, because it's not somebody who's like, look at me, look at all I do for a community. Mm -hmm. But it was great because he goes, it's kind of hard because they all order apple juice. And he goes, there's a line around the building, not, not, because it's busy, the service is just a little... <laughs> and it, it's very funny and, and true, and it was very vulnerable. And mm -hmm. the the woman and the guy the behind him... just like... Just, just this resting bitch face. We have it. Oh, do you have it? Yeah. yeah. The, uh, the the one in the back. There's one thing you know Look at her. Zoom in there. There's one thing you notice though when you work with these guys. It's very it's fun. Sucks. There's literally there's zero difference between us and them, and uh, especially. I do not approve. Oh man, I I live for to see that face in the audience when I'm on stage. Well, his... That's the face I always want to see right front and center, and uh, just just d daring her to get up. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure he was disappointed not being able to see her. But well, she was so mad. She just wanted to. <laughs> Play your violin. <laughs> <laughs> well, and he was great. He was fantastic. It's like, and his parents. He's one of those there. actors. He's just better than the show. I'm gonna go exactly. ahead and be honest. One of those it. comedians that are that's on the show that should be part of the the legends on SNL. You know, like he has that. He harkens back to that kind of. Yeah. earlier SNL yeah. style. You, you mean when it was funny? Good. Yes. <laughs> when the yeah. show was funny. Well, it, it's hard to watch because, like, Michael, Shane, Colin Jost, I do think do a good job on Weekend Update. Um, I think that that They've been works. there for a while. And they have been, and I think they're both very... I think they're both funny comedians. Um, but with the rest of the cast, I just don't understand where the star power is. I mean, you could... Even in recent years, you knew where it was. I mean, you could see... Jason Sudeikis, you could see yeah. Bill Hader, you could see Bobby Moynihan for what he was. I mean, they all had this certain it factor. I don't even know who's on and the I'm, show right now. I didn't know any of them. I was just and I was just missing it. And I don't know. The show just the Trump sneaker sketch was great. I I guess yep. it's just not. It's every time I watch us, and now you kind of just go eh. Mm -hmm. And I thought he he obvious he's better than the show. And the Limu Emu was the funniest. That's the one I didn't watch. I watched funny, the Trump. Well, it wasn't on the one. show. They cut it, and it's the funniest sketch I've seen. In like, it's one of the. It's why I love SNL. It's like Toons is the driving cat. It's, it's like it, the offbeat, uh, the weird stuff. chicken, uh, Mr. Bill um, yeah, yeah, from yeah. back to the seventies. Like just the uh, bizarre uh, Julia Child, the Julia Child with yeah. The, when he cuts his finger yes, open, just yes. leaves <laughs> all over the turkey. The yeah, I love the offbeat weird stuff. We uh, do have it. Do we, if we want to take a look at it. Well, yeah, let's take a look. We have the to talk a emu. little bit over just so you know, and it's seen. to prevent a copyright strike. And this is it. Good, and nice. Go. We're on. It's it. very funny. And then Quick yeah. Leave Somebody's paying for coverage. They don't. And know that emu has some star power. Uh -huh. He it. does. We have to talk over it. Don't be mad. It looks real. <laughs> That's a, lets you customize yeah. and say, so you only pay for what and you need. Whoa, really? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. 
<laughs> We're in a bad part of town. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> it's like you wanted this to happen, lady. <laughs> like a goddamn cowboy. You know what they do to insurance salesmen in jail? <laughs> God damn it, fine. Do it. Yeah, I can see. They got a call. They got a call from Liberty Mutual. Oh, yeah, that's got to be I it. I guarantee that's why it was cut. Because it's too good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know who it was? It's probably the writers for Liberty Mutual. They're going, you know, that's funnier than anything we've done in all the 10 years of our commercials. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. It's going down on the coke. <laughs> you want half? You're dirty, Limu. And now you're dirty my ass up, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like training day. What I love here is you can see what I always thought about Chan, and I told him this when he was first on um, our show with Kumia. He has a John Candy factor, and you can yeah. almost see him look like that in Blues alive. Brothers. Yeah, he's got, he's got a John Candy factor with a, with a Chris Farley energy. It's, yeah, he's got, yeah. He, has a, he has that ability. Something like really familiar about him and friendly. Yeah. But also just like he can get likable. Yeah. Really likable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think that's why he's on a show that it's, it's always pandered so hard now, and it was fun to watch because they did have to kind of cater to comedy that wasn't their style yeah, anymore. Yeah. And it and I I mean it was it, it did was not enjoyable. deserve him at all. It, no. Especially the way it, it went down. I'm sure you know, I'm sure it was great for him to to get in front of so many different eyes, but uh for the way that they treated him, they did not deserve his contract. Did they have to buy out his contract? I they paid him, yeah. They paid oh, okay. him. Okay. I mean, but, you know, you're getting feature player scale at that point, and I'm not saying mm -hmm. it's bad, but, I mean, yeah. no, you go from... Oh, but yeah, but you pay me not to go to work? <laughs> I'll take it. Win. Yeah. I mean, you also find out you get paid not to be on that show, then you end up on <laughs> yeah, right. right. Now you're selling out arenas. It's like, that's the best thing ever. I mean, I know, what, I, what I do appreciate about those, I think Lauren brought him on to make it right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And yeah. I think it was more because a lot of people are like wondering, like, were they using him? Was it this? And I'm like, no, I think it really just came down to I don't think because Lauren kept telling Shane, we just have to get to update. We just have to make it to update. And it was just pressures from people above him right. that ended up because I don't think Lauren's anybody who honestly cared. Right. Yeah, that's probably the network. Well, obviously he was he was cool because you know if if I got fired and then got invited back to do a monologue that was live, <laughs> oh, yeah. but yeah, he the first time I would not that's have been as polite. That's happened a whole lot. Like Norm, uh, Adam Sandler yeah. as well were fired and then brought back on like the next year. Jenny Slate too, I think. Yeah, for Jenny Slate. Yeah. So it's not new in their in their history at all for the for them to bring somebody back. And Sandler didn't go back very often. No. Like Not at all. Norm did, but uh, a bit, but yeah, Norm came back the very next year and he was like, last year I wasn't funny. <laughs> this year. <laughs> yeah. In the Listen. perfect Norm way. But I think the, I think it, I think what they were doing honestly is like, they need a Trump if he wins mm -hmm. and nobody's doing it better than Shane. They showed him in, in the Trump sketch and it was like. And it was a great sketch for when he puts on the Air Trump shoes. Shane's impression was great. Yeah, and then he goes and throws the ball and still completely misses, yeah. but just talks <laughs> crap to everybody on the court, which I think, yeah, <laughs> is this one. Yeah, they're playing with it. I was you're, actually surprised no, that tired. they kind of leaned in into it. A well, the more. Joe Biden oh, they did too yeah. at the end. Not on the court. Going for three. Well, the writers' room, you never know <laughs> yeah. how they feel, and you never know how a lot of these people feel. Oh, yeah, that's true. But that's all about I just think change. the whole network is pressured Gordon, to be a certain lockstep. Donald yeah. J. Trump? When they need to go the opposite, that is exactly what they need to do, is to do the opposite of what the network pushes against them. <laughs> I always thought it was the writers. I thought it was just the writers. I thought it was that Harvard click. Could be. Just out of touch? Yeah, completely out of touch, completely one side. I don't know, because Jim Downey was always great. Like, he always knew what to do with Norm. Yeah, didn't miss. <laughs> And he's in bed with his wife. She's like, you want to do it again? He's like, no, you're, you're tired. tired. 
You're tired. I think if Saturday Night Live really had balls and they wanted to be edgy, what they would do is they would get Donald Trump to come on to play Alec Baldwin. Oh, that's yeah. a good idea. Oh, yeah. A, in a Western do a, sketch? Do a, yeah, do a Rust sketch. Mm -hmm. That would be brilliant. <laughs> I mean, it really would be. That would explode the internet. It would just break. Yeah, just would work absolutely. Out. But do you think, do you think God, any funny. of those writers would touch that idea? Yeah. It's, I would pitch it immediately. <laughs> I'd be like, why would we not like, do this? Right. <laughs> got an idea. You, you know Trump would. You know he's got oh a, you know he's got a chip on his shoulder that he's happy would, to do it. You want to play Alec Baldwin on a Saturday Night Live sketch? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. Uh, yeah, that's something that I would love. Yeah, I think know that you know the, it, it used to be very um, like when you look at the not beginning. Not pull the trigger. Did not pull the trigger. <laughs> I, pull, I didn't pull it. I didn't look, pull the trigger. I, 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 it's I, me. I, the gun just went off. Look, I yeah, I just uh, you know firearms <laughs> safety safety. It's not my thing. You he pointed it at a woman. That's what I just I don't get. It's like you still shouldn't point your gun. Okay, ever, dude. Okay, at so anyone. Ever. So Doesn't documents matter. have come out because they're they just had the Alec Baldwin trial. Yeah, because he's yeah he's and now being the, indicted. The armorer is now through well, yeah, going through the, trial. Yeah, they got to find. And someone. Through her documents, it's she stated that she tried to get him to do safety practice over and over and over oh, and over, and he never would. And and the line producer came up to her and said, "Hey, uh, you need to stop asking Alec to practice so much. You need to focus on the other duties that you have and not the guns." And she was like, "No, like if the guns are on set, they need to be the most important thing." But he was like, "No, you need to focus on something else to stop bothering Alec." Yeah. Are you that's, serious? That's from her statement, yeah, wow. in court. Wow. <laughs> wow. Which hey, I I apologize to her because you know wait we. we we lambasted that that woman a lot because she's like a, a nepotism person. Like her right. dad was in the industry for a long time and she just kind of like she's super young. So everybody just assumed that she is just the fault was on her, too. But from some of the stuff she said, if it's true, it Didn't sounds she like have it was coke all in her system. Her? Yeah. I think the I mean, she's on. I think pot. On, on if you look at her, you can you can smell the pot. Yeah. Just looking at I mean, either way. It's everybody on she, Okay, but she had coke and pot in her system, but she's still right about the guns. Yeah, you should practice. I think maybe that's, uh, you should do more of that. I mean, maybe it was making her paranoid to a good level. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps more people should do yeah, smoke weed on set and be like, you know, those guns. We shouldn't maybe just be so, yeah. so uh, ham handed, <laughs> willy nilly. You know, just pointing them around, <laughs> pulling the trigger and whatnot. Yeah, like who should I point this at in the scene? The bad guy? No, the cinematographer. Yeah, right behind the right camera, down the barrel, right off to the gate, right to the side of the camera. Right there. <laughs> How many people can't shoot people on purpose from that distance? Don't we don't saw a police the... officer that couldn't shoot his own car? No, don't point it at the camera. Don't, don't point it at the camera. Do you know how much those things cost? Yeah, yeah, whatever <laughs> you put it do. off to the off side. To the side. <laughs> Very expensive. where the operator is. They're expendable. Who wants to watch a movie with Alec Baldwin called Rust that takes place in the Wild West? That's the part that I don't get. I kind of do now. I might. Well, see now it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when that movie comes out, I'm watching it. It's uh, the Vic Morrow scene in shot. Twilight Zone was the one I waited for. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. Oh, no. You wanted to see like, helicopter crash right now. Go, go. Yeah, no pun intended, but you wanted to see how much they could cut out. Aww. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, this one, but it's like that wouldn't appeal to anyone. Like, who's looked at Alec Baldwin as a leading man? Since Thirty Rock, well, it's kind of you know it's kind of that Kevin Cosner, Harrison Ford thing. Is they're all they're all doing the cowboy yeah. shows now, yeah. So it's kind of it's, they're kind of rejuvenating their careers as the old grizzled man of the West Not anymore. Yeah, but Alec Baldwin to me, I guess maybe it's just me, but he just never worked as a real actor or leading man. Oh yeah, yeah. Like he just yeah. never no, he never well, clicked with. I thought him. he he was he was a better supportive. Hey, support. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, yeah. he's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. Um, they're uh. There's a ton of movies, you know, that he's great in, but he, but as a lead, as a lead, like, yeah, I can, it, I can see that. Was it Baby Blues or Miami? <laughs> it's Boss complicated. Baby? It's <laughs> like it's a little, he's made a lot of crap when it's <laughs> that was true. He's at the helm. The is it the Getaway? The Shadow. He's in that movie. Oh the God! Shadow. Yeah, I saw that in the theater. As shadow. A disappointed child. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh! Pointed at yourself, Alec. <laughs> Oh, so more on comedy. 
uh, friends of mine and uh, Kurt Metzger, friend of the show, who's yep. been on several Kurt. times, but also Dave Smith, uh, Louis J. Gomez, and Jim Florentine have all had their shows canceled by the Capitol Hill Comedy Bar in Seattle. So are they shutting down their comedy bar? Is that why they're canceling these shows? No. That would be ridiculous otherwise. Believe it or not, uh, they feel that in Seattle, the politics of the area would not cater to them. So this was uh, what was sent to uh, Jim, who, of course, posted it. (laughs) (laughs) Capitol Hill is known for its progressive values, and we've received significant feedback expressing concern about the alignment of these upcoming shows with the neighborhood's ethos. This feedback includes concerns from local advocacy groups that are deeply embedded in our community (laughs) and work towards upholding its values. Yeah, This is where Chop and Chaz was. was. Yep, Yep. right there. Right there. Yeah, I I talked to a friend of mine. I won't say who he is and where he was there, but um, he said that let's say a lot of local comics were the ones that uh, complained and started putting uh, the. Oh yeah, on. yeah, no that, that that that's happened all over the country with comics. Comics certain certain comics get together and they form a coalition, mm. and they all they all like ask that the club be be sensitive to, to, you know, diverse, and they make all these demands. It's, I know a couple club owners, they've actually seen, they've shown me the, 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 the I don't know, the manifestos they get from these, from these idiots. And yeah. uh, mo- the, the good clubs say, well, I know, I know who not to book now. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, you know, some clubs fold to the pressure. And I, I don't know why they send them an email. You know, but back in my day when I was getting canceled from the clubs, it was just, ah, uh, we double booked that week. Sorry. Yeah. They sort of went around it in a way where they didn't. Yeah. They, ne- they never said, they never said that it was uh, something mm-hmm. I was doing on stage that. Uh, it's the worst thing you can do. And the worst thing you can do is send it to Jim Florentine, <laughs> <laughs> Louis J. Gomez, and Dave Smith. Heavy uh, hitter like comedians. The, well, they're also not going to be quiet about it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and, yeah. Because why would they be? You're dumb. Yeah. You're dumb. It, yeah. Like, this, <laughs> it, I, if I if you asked me without them getting canceled, who's the four worst comics? You <laughs> That's probably who I'd name. I'd go, Jim would probably be the nicest about it, but he's still going to post it. <laughs> Kurt talked about it on the Jimmy Dore show. Oh, did he? Yeah. D- do you have a clip? He's been mm-hmm. talking about it on Twitter nonstop. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's been going off Fantastic. on Twitter. That is mental. Well, uh, look, it, it really, I hate punching down the phrase. I, I hate it. But it is punching down to Jess with one S. Um, but I'm not mad at her. And it's uh, important for her because now that woke is dying, and it's dying. There's no point, even saying it, there's no point in saying it. It's dying. Um, a lot of the people that went along with it are going to, like in Glorious Bastards, try to blend back into society. Yeah. Okay? And now, not physically in real life, but just with my words and mockery, you're going to have to imprint that symbol on their head. The only punishment they deserve is mockery. Nothing more than that. But we have to do it so that this can never happen again. So what's next? And that's the point that I, I feel an obligation to society to make fun of. Obviously, there's some loser at a place that's failing. I don't I don't hate her or feel angry, angry, but everyone needs to see, don't have the class to not talk shit about this because it has to go away. And it's the only way we're going to get rid of it is mockery. You draw the line at would you book a comedian who voted the wrong way? <laughs> what if a comedian you found out voted for for uh, for Trump? Would you just go? Well, the community said they feel threatened. Do they it's have not, a don't ask, don't tell policy at least for that? It's not a safe space. <laughs> I have a show called Tell Us Who You Voted For, and we have like a guillotine <laughs> in the back. <laughs> I love Kirby. It's so He's good. The best. Yeah. There's a uh, there, there, there's like a, a like an open micer in uh, um, in Chicago. He he was just he was like a host at one of the one of the open mics there, and uh, somebody told another person that he said off stage that he thinks gender is binary and he was banned from all the Chicago shows. Can you imagine having your in the reality thrown away? Yeah. Also over something like, did he say it? Cause that's like a sentence. Yeah. When would that come up? I, I, I don't know. I, just, I just remember, yeah. I just remember, I just remember reading through the Facebook feed. Oh, no. Like, Can you believe he would say that? Can you believe somebody would be so ignorant? Someone that ignorant has no place in the Chicago comedy scene. Yeah, they, they call them doctors. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, well, it, I talked to somebody there, and this woman opened the club and with her uh, husband and, you know, wants to get new people in. 
And she's also somebody who is a comic, and she wants to skip some steps in comedy oh, by, okay. you know, meeting sure. these people and get ahead a little bit. And that's what she did. So then, of course, she feels the pressure from the woke mob that's sitting there in Seattle, which is n- never going to give you money, never going to help your your place, right. only is going to leech off you. Yeah, right. they don't have You're jobs. not going to draw the crowd. They're not. It, it, there's no reason to cater to any of these people. These are open micers. And so that's what she did was she was like, I, I guess I'll just cancel yeah. all the, and it's, it's like, get a theater across the street. <laughs> you know what I mean? At this point, because yeah. there's no reason to have this happen. Every type of comedy should exist. And if you want to have trans drag, whatever, at your, have it at your venue. Yeah. But don't cancel comics be, thinking there's nobody with, I mean, Dave Smith is a libertarian. Louis J. Gomez just doesn't care. You know, uh, Jim Florentine is uh, is a conservative. Kurt Metzger is uh, Kurt. Kurt, <laughs> yeah. in between. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like it's there's no real yeah. label you can put on some of them. It, it's just wrong. Don't go to the show if it doesn't make you comfortable. Why would you go to the show? Just it, let them play. Here's here's the thing too. If you want to bring people into your club, what you do is you book those guys and let everybody that sent you that petition letter. Uh, Stand outside and protest, and, yeah. and call the news and tell them it's going on. That's how you get people in the club. Mm-hmm. I, oh, of I, I, I mean, this those 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 four guys could get together and they could they could sell out huge theaters now oh, because of this in Seattle. Like when I was oh, there, yeah, there was absolutely. tons of people that came up to me and were like, "Hey, man, I don't agree with any of this. This is crazy. All this stuff is is crazy. I don't think about any. I'm not I'm not leftist. I'm I'm conservative. I just live here because of work or whatever. So there's definitely people." That would go to shows that are neutral. He was there during Chop, though. <laughs> the height, <laughs> the height of it. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah, yeah. It's just like I'm just trying to go outside to this new country <laughs> and make What's it. Going right on out here in Washington. <laughs> but Kurt's absolutely right. Woke is dying. It's it is. dying. It's going to die a very brutal death. It's going to be lashing out at everybody as it goes down because it's losing its popularity. It's it's pull. Well, it's already become a slur. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's it's derogatory to say. <laughs> it's fu- it's just fucking boring. Yeah, I mean, it's just as done. It's like we get it. You want to be called one, this everything. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Nobody cares enough about stuff in their life or has the time to care that much about you. And they don't care enough about other people. So stop pretending it's some empathetic movement when it's not. Yeah. There's no empathy behind it. There's nothing more about it than going. We have to seek and destroy this person. All they did, if if you break it down, is take away money from people that have children and have mm. mouths to feed. Yeah. Wow. Great. What a wonderful <laughs> movement you've created. How altruistic yeah. of you. Good job. Yeah. It's not just because you're not comfortable doesn't mean you shouldn't go. But if you want to be comfortable, you should go to trymiracle.com. <laughs> that <laughs> is where you will oh, be yeah. comfortable. <laughs> Are you tired of traditional bed sheets? Hell yeah. The kind of bed sheets that would, pff, I don't know, kick you out of a club in Seattle for oh. having your own opinion? I hate those kinds of sheets. Worst sheets imaginable. These sheets make you feel like you're seeing an actually funny show in a very large sheet <laughs> that's comfortable. Now, Dave, I sleep uh, warm. Yes. I get the flop sweats, you know? What's a would flop these, sweat? Would these, oh, you, you've never experienced the flop sweat? What's a flop? I've w- heard of a meat sweat. You, you, you wake up, it's just like just flopping right off your face. I don't you know? I'm not. Do you, do you, for example, I went to Voodoo Donut last night <gasps> and okay. I ate what uh, is a donut uh, covered in Oreos and peanut butter in my room at 12.30 to celebrate. Uh, I need help. Anyway, I woke up and my shirt was uh, glued to me with water. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> and I don't know if it was from that just would... the, trying to get the bacteria out of me or the poison, but just covered. Uh-huh. It was the hotel bed sheets. They weren't. They weren't doing. What they, they were just to regular do. ass. You, just, you just solved it, Angela. It's exactly it. And I looked at the sheets and I said, "You know what the problem is? These aren't miracle. Yeah. Miracle. And they aren't designed to cool you off. No. And they aren't designed to wick off bacteria. Mm-mm, they're not inspired by NASA. They don't have like little flakes of silver in them. Nope." That's Miracle Made. That's correct. So try MiracleMade.com slash normal. Get 40% off. Try Miracle.com. Dot com. Try Miracle.com. Forget the dot com. They are We're like 20 years into having computers and and the online, but don't forget the dot com. Yeah, but look, I personally think they are made from miracles, but that's just (laughs) an opinion. Don't hold the company to that. They didn't tell us to say that. But I do sleep in them every 
night, and I love them, mm -hmm. and use promo code NORMAL. And also, you're going to get three free towels with your order right now. What? And save over 40%. 40%? And the towels. 40%? I'm telling you, 40%. My goodness. That's at best how full that club's going to be <laughs> the rest of time. <laughs> so you just look at it. Go to trymiracle.com slash normal. You will get a hand, face, and body towel coming right to you and 40%, all because you used normal and wow. you're going to go, you know what? Thanks, normal world. You made me feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you should get an extra set of those sheets to take on the road with you. Yeah, I think you're right. Good idea. There's never a good. There's never a good sheet. Nope. I don't care. Starchy. Nope. You're super yeah. starchy and like thick. I never care how nice the hotel is. It, yeah, it doesn't matter. My friend just stayed at Hotel Zaza in Austin, and he put a video up. He, he was on the show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Big angry. Yeah. And uh, holy crap. Not good? The bed bugs. <gasps> At Hotel Zaza? The most ex what? he had an $850 a night room. And he woke up to him and his wife being eaten by bed bugs. <gasps> wow. And you can go, it is absolutely, it was the most horrific video I've ever seen. They oh were the So he actually had a video of them crawling on him? Yes. Usually, oh, usually they're really it's just hard to, Once yeah. you wake up, they disappear. Yeah. So, yeah. so these, were, these were not, these were bed bugs with attitude. Dude, yeah. he, they were all covered in blood. I've oh, never seen uh, anything what? like this. And then they they go to complain, and they're like, "You can't use our washers." And and this is a guy you don't want to say that to. Huh. He's like seven feet tall. You say his name and, is Big Angry. Yeah, the, uh, my lawyer, <laughs> lawyer Charles. Yeah, 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 but that's yeah. What I'm saying. Like, don't, don't tell him, him no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the washing machines aren't going to do anything because they hide. They hide in the seams of mattresses. yeah. It doesn't matter. No, they can survive. They hide. They hide in extreme heat and crevice. Well, That's what they and they. Have you ever had bed bugs, dude? I had one. I, time I went to Vegas and stayed at a place, and I brought it back. Circus, circus, exactly. <laughs> was it <laughs> yes, the Tropicana? It was. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I had a feeling. Thirty-eight dollars a it night, was, though. You it, can't beat yeah, it, huh? Yeah, it was right there on the strip. <laughs> yeah, circus, circus. You just don't come back with your clothes. <laughs> no, you know, throw them right in the incinerator. Yeah. You come back in a barrel like those old cocktail napkin cartoons. Yeah. I, <laughs> I always learn, like, pull the sheets up and then... You check those corners, bro. Yeah, you stare at the bed for a good minute. Yeah. And if it's not moving, you're good. Yeah. Yeah, got a, I got a black light flashlight I travel with now. Do you? I don't even want to know. No. I don't want to know at that level. I think. Well, sometimes it's the nicest hotel because people come from foreign countries and they're well, they're well off, but they bring that crap with them. Mm -hmm. so they might be very wealthy staying in this room, but they still are covered in bugs. Gross foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Oh, yeah. Just the black light. Crazy. I don't know if I could do because I'd just be like, "Well, there's no bugs, but sure is a lot." Of <laughs> you stay in a lot of hotels, being communities oh, yeah. all over the place. What's the weirdest thing you've ever found in a hotel, like left over by somebody before? Oh gosh, that's a good question. Human head. Oh, <laughs> the mini fridge. I had to think. I had to think about that one. Yeah, I'm not sure. Found a dildo. Uh, did you find in a the drawer? Dildo? Yeah, we were like, "Oh, we got this. Let's check out." And it, we pulled the, the drawer, and it rolled from the back into the front. Um, last by the Gideons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gideon. Gideon checked out. <laughs> I, th I find stuff all the time. I found a, a drawer of, of, that had used condoms. So I was like, a hooker was here, and obviously just rolling them into the drawer. Um, and even last week when I checked into a nice hotel, somebody had clearly been freebasing and the, mm. the tinfoil was just left in the toilet, but the rest of the room was clean. And I'm like, do I, do I tell them? Because it could have been the maid. It was courtesy, maybe. Yeah. So I just, I lived with it. <laughs> it was a nice hotel. <laughs> but I, but Free yeah. tools. Something to aim at. Yeah. But I found, I don't know. I found a lot of stuff over the year. I would say the lightning bug story though, the worst ever was the room full of lightning bugs and then they oh, yeah. corrected it by sending me to a room full of lightning <laughs> <laughs> that's magical though yeah yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's real magic when they live the kids would have been like oh this is awesome like this is no the they're best. bugs it's disgusting something's burrowing into my ear <laughs> what about you 
Uh, yeah, I, I, I blanked it from my memory. It's, yeah. Uh, it was that some bad? Of these, too oh, oh, man. It's, uh, and, and also, worse than hotels, uh, uh, they, used to, they used to have comic, con, they, it was called condos. I'm so glad that's it, it was like It was like an all apartment gone. That, the, uh, that the club had rented or occasionally bought. They would buy, buy a condo and then they could deduct it and then let the comics mm. in. Oh, just uh, always, always had to wash the sheets. Because they they never they they hire they would hire a waitress to uh, uh, clean the room and uh, she'd just make the bed. <laughs> yeah, not a professional. She's a waitress. <laughs> well, yeah, you would come back though. Like Matt would, I McLeod remember walked in a day before we were supposed to be there and just walks in and it's just the waitress having sex on his bed. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, hey, I can come back tomorrow. And she's like, no, no, we're sorry. We'll be done in a minute. He's like, that's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The comedy condos were ones where, oh, roaches. Wow. I remember we pulled a couch out once. I want to say it was in Oklahoma. And it was just creatures underneath this thing. Like, it just looked like they were from a monster movie. <laughs> they just lived under there. You would find, oh, my God. And there was a film on everything. Uh, yeah. Oh, God. The, uh, the 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 one story that's legendary is that uh, 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 there were there were some the, the idea is that there's usually like like two maybe three rooms in a condo and the, and the headliner always gets the master then the feature and MC yeah. get the get the other two and a headliner got there late and there was two young young comics there that did not know the the protocol and uh, they took the, uh, the, the the they had taken the rooms and uh, all that was left was the couch mm. so he calls uh calls the the agent and said uh yeah i i, I don't even have a door of my room <laughs> <laughs> and he goes oh, give me a minute and you can hear the computer typing he goes you're headlining this week right and he goes yeah he goes headliner gets the door <laughs> <laughs> a door <laughs> yeah a door an actual closing door <laughs> Dude, the only one i remember not being bad was the zany's brownstone right behind the club yeah yeah. In downtown Chicago on Wells. Yeah. Yeah. It was the only one where you went and you were like, oh my goodness, I could bring up. Bring a, f a person in here. Live here. They used to. Uh, you, so you know the downtown Zanies. It's, yeah. Uh, 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 um, they're, they're, there's the club on the bottom and uh, the upstairs is like an apartment. And it used to be the VIP room back when it was Club Amor before Zanies took over. And uh, But it was it's it's a bathroom. There's a shower. There's a, And that's where they would put up the comics. Oh, God. And uh, and they would leave they would leave the door to the bar open, and the owner Rick would just say he told me this story he just say you guys just don't rape me you know just you know, <laughs> drink all you want just yeah <laughs> drink all you want but don't get stupid okay, and uh, what they did was they a uh, couple of comics went across the street to another bar they picked up some hookers. Of course. And took them in after the bar closed. They said, well, we can go drinking. We, we got keys to the club next door. And they opened up the club. They started drinking. And they gave them all T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> and the next day, the owner's driving to work along North Avenue, which used to be the big hick hooker strip. And all the hookers have the same <laughs> T-shirts on. Free advertising, yeah, man. Yeah, like a billboard. <laughs> he said he had to get out of the car and had to negotiate with the hookers. And no, 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 I don't want anything. Just 50 bucks. Just the shirt. <laughs> I don't want you to take it off yeah. in front of me or anything yeah. like that. Just Don't, don't sexually take, it, take off. it off. I had a, <laughs> <laughs> I had a club where... Um, uh, and R.I.P. Pete, I love you. But it was Kai Hoga Falls, and it was the it's a, it's an awful condo. I'll just say it. And uh, I still perform there twice a year. I, I love I love his wife. I love his family. But uh, the condo the, is next to this bar where they just do meth in. Like a friend of mine went in there and had a beer and was up for three days. They just wow. drugged him. <laughs> and uh, first time I was there, I smoked, and there was a guy who was like a cyclist staying with me. And he goes, uh, he's like, yeah, do you mind smoking outside? I'm like, yes, yeah, no problem. So I'm just having a cigarette outside and a wino is just pissing on the wall next to me and laughing. And I'm like, could you not do that? Like, and I'm on the phone with my wife and I'm like, yeah, I don't, uh, there's a guy pissing. <laughs> so just where goes I am up. now. And then the next time I come down, a guy comes up to me. And he goes, you the comic? And I'm like, oh, yeah. And this guy's bald head, but, you know, by choice. Mm -hmm. And he's like, you know, there's no such thing as freedom of speech anymore. And I'm like, just want to agree with him. I'm like, yeah, I hear that. And he's like, yeah, get this. He goes, I go up to this couple interracial, right? And I say to this guy, I go back to Africa. And I pull a gun on him. 
Next thing you know, I get pulled over. Yeah. Ain't no such thing as freedom of speech anymore. <laughs> Every time. Every goes, time. I'm facing, I'm facing hard time now. And I realize he's got fucking swastika tattoo. Like, ah, and I go, yeah, okay. no such thing as, hard, as freedom of speech anymore. And I went upstairs, looked at the guy, lit up a cigarette, and I was like, you're the feature act. Go fucking bike outside. And I just smoked in the condo the rest of the week. Like I'm not dealing with any more of those people. But yeah, it's unbelievable. The guy couldn't, he was right out of a movie. And it's like, why did you, why? <laughs> like, do you understand? No, here's what you did. You said something horrifically racist, but you could probably have gotten away with that. You pulled a gun on them, <laughs> sir. That's the, the line there. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that. But I, I didn't want to explain that to him because I didn't. Yeah, he's <laughs> kind of, kind of. You might pull a gun on you. Kind of confusing the first and second amendments there. I feel he's set. Mixing it up. You know, it's just set in his ways. <laughs> uh, we just got one more quick story to get to. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld uh, was hassled by an anti-Israel protester outside a Jewish community center in New York City. Uh, they said that you support genocide. Um, I, it's unbelievable. Uh, we do have a clip of Jerry's set from that night. Israel? What kind of name is that for a country? Israel? Of course it's real! I've been there! <laughs> and how about the Gaza Strip? I thought that was a gentleman's club. <laughs> What's the deal with genocide? Everyone I talk to, they say genocide is the worst thing ever. Everyone's always talking about genocide. Well, have you seen Jenna's front? Or even Jenna's back? Those aren't so great either. <laughs> The legend. <laughs> it's deliberately as terrible as we needed it to be. All right. Well, uh, hey, Tim, we, yeah, well, Tim, where where can we find you? Where else can we find you? Just want to double plug you at the end here. Ew. Uh, you can go to. <laughs> <laughs> Requiem for a dream. Uh, Angela's going to film it. <laughs> As always. Yeah, I'm sorry. We're not into girls. <laughs> so I think I'm doing a tool and die holiday party in a week. So that's that's good. A private event. Right. So uh, or suicide or what else? <laughs> <laughs> My career's taken off, let me tell you. <laughs> Dude, thank you very much for coming on. We oh, appreciate man, thanks it. Thanks for having me. Uh, yes, check them out. What's your website? TimSlegel.com. All much. right. And uh, go to, uh, well, you know what? Let's just go into the end of the world. Let's do it. Ow! All right. Let's talk about this. Why not? Why not do this question again? Yeah. Who would you like to see host SNL now? Uh, R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's done his time, you know? Just... Time for, time for us. He's done his time. <laughs> I think he's got like another 40 years. <laughs> That's enough. Do Angela. You Do you, you got your shots? <laughs> um, I'm going to say Dennis Rader. Oh, I like that. The BTK guilt. And he's still alive. Yeah, and he's kind true. of funny. Yeah. I hear he's a real cut up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> no, he <laughs> <doesn't>. <laughs> He did that serial killer joke. <laughs> yeah. The crime scenes. Mm. He would leave cereal. <laughs> oh, that's, that's hilarious. <laughs> so funny, Dennis. Find your, your, your Dennis, you are just you're you're crazy when you you're find crazy. your mother you're bind and tortured and killed. Such a ham. <laughs> and you go, is that lucky charms? Uh this day just got a little brighter. Not enough charms. No. Um, yeah. Who would you like to see? Vladimir Putin. Oh, oh. that would be good. Yes. He would kill. <laughs> His I, monologue's like 30 minutes long, and it's just the history of Russia. Uh-huh. Without a shirt. Did they yes. do the whole monologue without a shirt? He certainly wouldn't bomb. No. No. Oh, maybe. Hopefully. Hopefully not. <laughs> maybe. I would like to see Donald Trump just so he plays Alec Baldwin. I'm going to go with you. Yes. I, that's the best way. If any yes. SNL writers are out there, pitch that one. Do it. Yes. I want to see it. This needs to happen. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thank you very much for tuning in. We will see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye-bye. <laughs>